are many differences between preparing for a small gig and a big gig, but there's quite a lot of similarities as well, because at the end of the day, you're doing something pretty similar, which is playing show, trying to entertain people. At a small show, you're not ever going to be more than about 20, 30 metres away from any person in the room, which can be an advantage, because it means in terms of creating a sense of intimacy and connection with the audience, they're right there. Um, they're almost literally in the palm of your hand, and you can reach out and touch people and sweat on them, and you can get in the crowd and all that kind of thing. The disadvantage means if somebody's going to heckle you, it can get pretty personal. Do you know what I mean? If you've got somebody shouting at you from right there, um, you've got to get good at responding to that. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, but and if if the room's jammed at a small venue, uh, then the atmosphere is almost guaranteed to be electric. The constant danger that you always have to be worried about is shows turning into kind of something soulless, essentially, because they're too big. And I spend eight, so much of my time thinking about this. And one way of doing it is just always making sure that it's kind of a collective activity. You know, uh, we're playing Wembley, not I'm playing Wembley sort of thing, or whatever. Uh, you know, and yeah, we've done the flag thing going around, and I had a big party for my thousandth show, and everyone was sort of invited to that, and we did special t-shirts for it. And I think little things like that are kind of good ways of sort of making everybody feel like they're still sort of involved in something interesting and worthwhile. Talking to the crowd, um, one of the main difficulties and, and differences is that if you're in a small room, you can talk conversationally and people will understand what you're saying. If you're in a big boomy room that's full of 10,000 people, if you, if you talk at the speed that I'm talking right now, no one's going to understand what you're actually saying. Um, and, you, and it's something I, I learned quite quickly, is that if you want the crowd to understand what you're saying in a big room, then you talk with gaps between your words a bit like this. And it sounds weird, me talking to you like this, but the thing about it is you, do, you don't really notice at a big show because you can just un hear it and understand it. Meeting the crowd, hanging out with people after shows or indeed before shows is something that is sort of quite philosophically important to me. In the early days, playing smaller shows, I actually, for years, I used to sell my own merch at the shows, um, which was, I mean, to be honest, it was a money-saving exercise, so you don't have to pay a merch person, but also it was kind of a cool way of meeting people, and I'm quite a gregarious person, and I like hanging out, and, and it was really fun doing that for years. I can't do that anymore for a number of reasons. First of all, we, you know, we play longer shows. Um, as you get older, you have to take more care of your voice, all that kind of thing. If I did merch now, the amount of yakking I do before the show would have me cancelling shows after like two gigs, you know. Um, uh, also, I mean, it would just, it would be kind of cha crazy chaotic out there. Yeah. And uh, so I, I've been sort of trying to figure out ways of, um, of making sure I do stay in touch with people and don't sort of become aloof and removed. And I always try and go out after shows to meet people. And, and, I, and it's something I'd never charge for. God, I hate it when you get bands who buy a VIP meet and greet package. Fuck that. Like, it's charging for access to your person. That's bleh, horrible. If I ever start doing that, call me out on it. <laughs>